Ossification and Ossification, Part 2. Hello, I'm William Herring from Albert Einstein Medical Center in Philadelphia. In Podcast 26, we spoke about calcifications related to hands and joints, diffuse calcification and ossification, calcifications associated with vascular disease and myositis. In this podcast, we're going to talk about calcification or ossification related to tumors, metastatic calcification, calcification associated with parasites, some miscellaneous diseases, and there'll be an expanded quiz at the end. Calcification and ossification related to tumors. Calcification related to tumors can occur in a primary soft tissue tumor. It can occur from extension of a bone tumor or from malignant degeneration of a benign tumor. A synovioma, or a synovial sarcoma, is a malignant mesenchymal soft tissue tumor. It usually occurs in middle-aged or older adults. It almost always occurs in the lower extremities near joints, especially the knee, and it tends to present with a lobulated soft tissue mass. About 30 to 40 percent of them calcify. It can cause erosion of the adjacent bone. This is an example of a synovial sarcoma. There is a flocculin amorphous area of calcification in the foot between the first and second toes. Osteosarcomas most often occur in adolescence with a median age of about 17. The knee is affected in almost two-thirds of cases. They can be sclerotic in about a quarter, completely lytic in about a quarter, and usually mixed sclerotic and lytic. A soft tissue mass is usually present, and the new bone formation that occurs with an osteosarcoma is usually most irregular at the periphery of the lesion. This is an example of an osteosarcoma of the distal femur. You see a mass of amorphous ossification calcification that's associated with the lateral aspect of the distal femur. Parosteosarcomas especially invade adjacent soft tissues and produce bone formation. Chondrosarcomas are about half as common as osteosarcomas. They present in adulthood, usually in the fifth or sixth decades. The pelvis is most often involved. They can produce a large soft tissue mass and they have a rounded, granular, or popcorn ball appearance of cartilage calcification associated with them. This is an example of a chondrosarcoma of the pelvis. It has a mass of amorphous calcification associated with it. It resembles to some extent an osteosarcoma, but it occurs in a different age range, and the pelvis is the most common site for chondrosarcoma. Malignant degeneration of a benign tumor can occur when, for example, a chondrosarcoma develops from a pre-existing skeletal lesion like an osteochondroma or an enchondroma. Metastatic calcification. Metastatic calcification is defined as calcification which occurs in otherwise normal tissue. Most commonly, it's seen in chronic renal disease, especially in those on long-term hemodialysis. It usually occurs in the upper lobes of the lung, to be in part due to the alkalinity of the upper lobes. It can easily be confused with pneumonia when it first becomes visible, but unlike pneumonia, it remains for weeks and months at a time. And if a bone scanning agent is used, there will be increased radioactive tracer uptake in the lungs. This is an example of metastatic calcification in the lung secondary to chronic renal disease. In the right upper lobe, inside the red circle, there are multiple small punctate calcifications. In the left upper lobe, the yellow arrow is pointing to a more confluent area of calcification. A bone scan may reveal uptake of the radio tracer in the lungs. In the anterior and posterior projections of this patient, we see uptake in the right upper lobe with the red arrow and throughout the left lung, the yellow arrows. Calcification associated with parasites. 
This is not going to be very common in the United States, but there can be calcification associated with the guinea worm, Trachunculus metanensis. It's usually the female guinea worm. It burrows into connective tissue with its larva, and it can calcify. It can achieve remarkable lengths. And this is an example of a calcified guinea worm in the proximal portion of the upper thigh. Tinea solium, the pork tapeworm, can also calcify. The eggs can form calcified cysts, especially in muscle, and there may be numerous small nodular calcifications as a result thereof. This is called sister sarcosis. This is an example of a patient with sister sarcosis, and there are multiple small punctate calcifications in the arm and in the leg of this patient. Miscellaneous calcifications. Weber Christian disease is a rare disease. It is relapsing paniculitis. It almost always occurs in females between 20 and 40 years of age. It's insidious in onset. It may involve painful bouts which result in calcification of subcutaneous fat in the extremities, the abdominal wall, the breasts, or the fat sometimes in marrow. This is an example of Weber Christian disease in the upper arm. You can see there are numerous small punctate calcifications. There would have to be appropriate history in order to be able to make that diagnosis. A hemangioma can present as a soft tissue mass that contains multiple flebolus. Flebolus, remember, have a radiolucent center, and the hemangioma can erode the underlying bone. This is an example of a hemangioma of the wrist. The white arrow is pointing to the soft tissue mass and the red arrow to one of multiple small calcifications or flebolus within this hemangioma. The pinna of the ear can calcify in Addison's disease, gout, or hyperparathyroidism. This is a skull x-ray, anterior is to your right, a posterior to your left, and the red arrows are pointing to the visible pinna of the ear in this patient who has a calcified pinna in Addison's disease. Injection cysts are common. They're sometimes called chincona cysts because they first were described secondary to quinine injections. They are injections of any material into the fat rather than the muscle, usually of the buttock. They can separate and drain. A biopsy shows fat necrosis and low-grade inflammation, and in fact, remarkably, the drug that was injected may still be present in the cysts even decades later. This is a classical example of an injection cyst in the right buttock. The red arrow is pointing to a calcified rim with a more loosened center characteristic of an injection cyst. Ossification can occur within a surgical scar. This is a form of myositis ossificans secondary to trauma or heterotopic ossification and it can occur in skin, muscle, or fat. It almost always occurs in males and it almost always occurs in scars that are oriented vertically rather than horizontally, especially in the abdominal wall. 70% of them tend to be above the umbilicus, 30% below the umbilicus. And this is an example of a right posterior oblique view of the abdomen in a male who has a linear ossification. You can see that there is a cortex that surrounds this density, which indicates that it is bone, and this is ossification within a surgical scar. Now it's time for your expanded mini quiz. First question is to mix and match these crystals with these diseases with which they are associated. The crystals are calcium urate, calcium phosphate, calcium hydroxyapatite, calcium pyrophosphate and the diseases are calcific tendinitis, pseudogout, gout, and tumoral calcinosis. Pause your computer or MP3 player and then resume playing when you think you have the answer. The correct associations are calcium urate is found in gout, 
calcium phosphate in tumoral calcinosis, which does also contain calcium hydroxyapatite, but calcium hydroxyapatite is more often associated with calcific tendinitis. And calcium pyrophosphate is found in pseudogout. This is a 34-year-old female with hand pain. Pause your computer or MP3 player while you ponder the diagnosis. This is calcinosis circumscripta, which is the fine punctate calcifications that you see in the tufts of both of the thumbs inside the red circle, and it is most frequently associated with the collagen vascular disease scleroderma. What types of calcifications are these? These are fleboliths in the pelvis. They are very common, they are asymptomatic, and they're recognizable by the more lucent center that the red arrow is pointing to. This is a 41-year-old male with limitation of motion in his joints. Pause your computer or MP3 player while you decide what type of calcification or ossification this is. This is myositis ossificans, or heterotopic ossification, in this case secondary to quadriplegia, secondary to immobility. You can see there's dense ossification surrounding both hip joints where the white arrows are pointing. This is a close-up of the wrist of a patient who has pain in the wrist. What's your diagnosis? There is calcification of the triangular fibrocartilage of the distal ulna, and this is a patient who has chondrocalcinosis in calcium pyrophosphate deposition disease. This is a lateral of the foot in a 68-year-old who has a chronic disease. What is your diagnosis? This is the typical arterial calcification, the track-like continuous calcification that you see in the media of arteries in patients who are diabetics. This is a 56-year-old female with swollen lower extremities. You're looking at a close-up of the calf. What's your diagnosis? These are the dystrophic calcifications that are seen usually in the calf in patients who have chronic venous insufficiency. They can also have periosteal reaction from stasis periostitis, but this patient does not demonstrate that. This is a 34-year-old male who was post-op six months ago for abdominal surgery. What's your diagnosis? Well, there is ossification within a scar in the anterior abdominal wall. The red arrows are pointing to the ossification. You can see the yellow arrow is pointing to surgical wires, ossification within a scar. This is a 27-year-old with diffuse muscle stiffness. What is your diagnosis? This is calcinosis universalis, which is most frequently associated with dermatomyositis or polymyositis. There is diffuse sheet-like calcification that's seen in both lower extremities. You're looking at a close-up of the right shoulder in a patient who has a chronic disease. What is your diagnosis? This is the tumoral calcinosis that's associated with chronic renal disease. There is a dense, white, flocculent, tumor-like mass that is associated with the right shoulder joint. And this patient was standing up for an upright chest x-ray, and the white arrows are pointing to a fluid-fluid level where the calcium has come out of...